You're listening to The Statement Show. I'm Linnea Quigley from Return of the Living Dead, Night of the Demons, Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. Listen to this statement show with Zach and Carrie, or I'll be down there with my own chainsaw. From the Night Shift Crew Studios in the D.C. metro area, this is The Statement Show. The lights are on. Hi, this is Lillian Garcia from the WWE, and you're listening to The Statement Show with Zach and Terry. Hey guys, it's Ivana Cadabra of Macabre Theater, and you're listening to Terry and Zach on The Statement Show. Hey, this is your lipid hero, Kurt Angle, and you're listening to The Statement Show with Zach and Terry. Oh, it's true. It's damn true. Hey, this is Corpsey. I am the publisher, editor-in-chief of Girls and Corpses magazine, and I am on the phone with Terry and Zach from The Statement Show. Corpses, woo! <laughs> this is Jackie Joy, and you are listening to the hottest podcast around, The Statement Show, with Terry James and Zach Dakey. Welcome back to another edition of The Statement Show. I'm Terry James. And I'm Zach Chahey, and you're listening to the podcast that fits in no category. Tonight, we have actress and scream queen, Linnea Quigley, with such film credits as Return of the Living Dead and Silent Night, Deadly Night, and A Nightmare on Elm Street 4. We welcome her to the statement show. Oh, well, thank you. You forgot to say the scream queen. All right. <laughs> the queen. The. That's right. Right. Oh, God. I'm glad to be here. Thank you very well, much. We are glad to have you. And we were talking right before we came on the air. Linnea's down in, in Florida and says that it's it's smoking hot down there and she hates it and here we are butt cold of a Washington DC and I, I, I just don't know how you can hate it down there, Lynn. I I don't. I mean Isn't oh. it the happiest place on earth yeah. down there? I know, right? Oh, it's just horribly happy. <laughs> it's like a lot of drunkards and um <laughs> snowbirds or Q tips. Mm-hmm. A lot of New Yorkers. Do you're what so- are you in South Florida or like sort of like right in the middle? No, I'm in South Florida, like South by Florida. Miami. Ta- yeah, I went down it's, to Miami. Okay, we'll trade places. You can come to my house. I'll go to your house. <laughs> That's fine. You can have it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you love being up in D.C. with all the political crap that goes on in this area. Oh, yeah, I you bet. probably haven't heard anything, but we had an election recently. I'm sure you haven't heard anything, right? No, I haven't heard about <laughs> that. Yeah, no, I, I didn't think you heard anything about the protests or anything. I, it, no. It's barely been on the news. <laughs> like, Absolutely. what, did Reagan win? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Well, he turned over in his grave, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Talking about that, we were filming on election night. It was a, mm-hmm. a night shoot. And nobody could have their cell phones on. And it was so stressed. What were you shooting? What movie? Oh, I was with, I was shooting with Ed Neal, who I love from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Hitchhiker. And we were shooting The Best Laid Plans. Hmm. Okay. You want to tell the us a little bit? Is great. this a movie that's out yet or is it coming out? No, it just was done. It's, it, the, I talked to the director. He wants to have it out by June. Okay. Okay. And what's the name of this movie but, again? The Best Laid Plans. The Best Laid Plans. Okay. Mm, okay. All right. I got to say it right in the beginning here. I'm a big zombie fan. I love zombie movies. The movie that you were in, Return of the Living Dead, was is a personal favorite of mine. I've, I've had that one and the one after it, of course, with the two. Th- there's the two common characters that are in both of them, which... You know, I don't know how they explain that, but I don't either. Yeah, they they're but they don't really explain it. Obviously, they just go off on another tangent with another movie. But of course, uh, your movie, of course, <laughs> is is one of my favorites, and I'm sure everybody knows what scene I'm talking about, which is one of my personal favorites. Oh, <laughs> the dance scene, but uh, very tasty. Great. Right. Yeah, right. I've never heard that ever. I'm never. sure you haven't. <laughs> so it's probably the first time you ever heard about it. Um, but no, the movie in a, as a whole, very very good. What? How did you get involved with that? How did that all come about? I got involved with it because I had done, I read for Stanzi Stokes, the casting director. I guess Return had already been cast, and then there were, there was a, a money issue or something, so they went on hiatus. When they were on hiatus, the girl who was going to play Trash got pregnant. Stanzi remembered me and had me come in with some other girls to read for the part of Trash. And luckily, I got it. 
That was the luckiest day of my life, I tell you. How long of a shoot was that? Do you remember? It was like six weeks and a, like a week of pickups, I think. I'm assuming that was all kind of like a made up graveyard, not really, wasn't a real graveyard yeah. in any way or? No, it was all made. It was pretty cool. The props and that did a great job with, with everything. All man made. It was an olive grove in Silmar. Okay. Okay. I mean, that had to kind of, you're like, not dressed half of that movie. I mean, did that bother you at all? Did a little bit because my my bass player she was being a zombie in it, mm-hmm. and she heard she was with the extras, and she heard the extras saying stuff like, "Oh, she's just walking around nude," you know. And it's like I didn't have a choice. That's part of the movie. <laughs> so I felt like kind of weird, you know, mm-hmm. like these people are commenting on what I'm doing, oh, but sure. I'm just acting. How much How much like that character, I mean, would be people be surprised by how you really are? Nothing like that? Oh, oh gosh, yes. They would be, it's so not like me, that <laughs> people would be really surprised. Would you say that movie helped springboard you off into some other stuff that really helped you out? I think so. It was probably a year after it came out, things started really happening. Okay. Like Night of the Demons and mm-hmm. those kind of movies. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. I mean, you actually first, I guess, first movie wise got your break in 75 and you figured that was 85. So there was a good 10 year period there. What was, yeah. I mean, did, did you, did you have that? I guess, did you have that thought that, you know, from 75 to 85, you had some small parts, but then obviously this one took you off into a whole other level. Was there that point where you were saying, Am I am I cut out for the acting? You know, am I gonna am I gonna go a different route, or did you always just know from seventy five to eighty five that this was it was just a matter of time before you took off? I think I kind of knew if I stuck with it, something would happen. I just I always kind of follow my instincts and like um, where it's telling me and stuff like that. It's like I think that I just you know stuck with my instincts and just kept going with the acting. Like nothing actually, was there that said no. Yeah, sure, sure. Because, I mean, a lot of people, you know, you figure 10 years, they're going to say, uh-uh, I'm, you know, I'll figure out something else to do. I'm glad that you stuck with that. I mean, because a lot of people wouldn't have, you know I mean? But you you obviously saw something or maybe even just felt something. I know a lot of people get that acting bug and just say, I, I'm, I'm going with it. And it obviously worked yeah. out well for you, you know? And I was also busy things like the band and recording and also doing some modeling, like for box covers of VHS mm-hmm. covers and uh, for little albums. And, and so I was kind of peripherally on the, on in the acting going on because actually you started what well, you started off in small parts and commercials and stuff, correct? Yeah. Well, I you had were, actually some speaking lines, a lot uh-huh. of main parts and some commercials. And what, were, and what were the commercials? Oh my gosh. <laughs> One, which I really abhor, um, Burger King, but I didn't eat any meat. <laughs> I had to say like, uh, this horrible thing. The director kept like getting mad at me. Like, Hold the pickle, hold the lettuce, blah, 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 blah. And it was like not a real well-known saying then. So it was, it was like, I'm like thinking, okay, you hold the pickle, lettuce, what, I'm thinking all this stuff. And he's like, no, say it faster. I mean, their commercial directors are mean. Was that like mm-hmm. a, like you guys kind of like sung it? I think I remember that commercial, to be honest with you. I remember yeah. one of them. It's like, hold the pickle, yeah. hold the lettuce or something like that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, like I would remember. Yeah, yeah. That one of those, and then I did close up toothpaste. Oh, nice. oh close up! Oh my god, I remember that. And I even wow. got to go on the Dick Clark show live, and you know him saying, "Oh, this couple is totally fresh breath." And then I kiss <laughs> a guy, and it's like so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, they're cutting a check, so go with it, right? <laughs> right, right. Oh exactly. my god, yes. Oh my God, I got some great checks, man. So, I mean, that was good. How, how would you say if somebody wanted to get into acting? I mean, the funny part is every time I hear an interview from a, a, an actor, they tell everybody, this isn't the business for you. Of course, they're, they're doing really well and doing all this stuff and getting paid well and they're telling people not to do it. It almost seems kind of, I don't know. 
uh, counterproductive. I mean, they're telling people not to do what yeah. they're doing. So would you yeah. tell somebody who's interested in acting to follow the dream and go all in? Or what would you suggest? What, oh, yeah. what advice would you give somebody just starting? Well, I give the advice that you should take acting lessons. You should be an extra or any kind of um, thing that you can help on in a set. So you learn the etiquette and, you know, just the way things are done and just watch. And if somebody gives you just a tiny part in a movie, just do it. You know, don't be the person that goes, well, my friends see me as a superhero, <laughs> so I will not do this part as a, you know, cop in the background. Okay. You know, you have to. You know, just don't walk in starting like a diva. Eh, I gotcha. No, gosh, no, no. <laughs> do you ever film and close to DC? Do I you haven't ever do any... really. Man, because like if you were ever close to, you, I want I want to be an extra in a film. I don't even want to be the main character. I just want to okay. be an extra. Yeah, you Terry, know? Terry, well, Terry strikes me as the kind of guy great. to watch his head get lopped off. Oh, I would be amazing. Well, I'd love. To I see would that love too. to interview for my documentary called Extras. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a whole documentary on extras. Really? I just interviewed like 50 people the other day. Oh, my God. No, really? And it's, it's wow. really interesting. It, I want it to be like Penelope Sears' Decline of Western Civilization. Okay. What What is it's some of the... probably before your time, but... Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know any of the... T I don't know the... T I'm not familiar with the title. I know uh sounds familiar, kind of like, because I watched a documentary about heavy metal. And it had some yeah. of the title, D Decline of the Western Civilization, a documentary in heavy metal. So, I mean, that's just kind of my thing. So, what you said you were in a band. It would be great to have you as extras on <sighs> something. What would God. you be? Um, would you want to be a, a zombie? Would you like to be a person screaming or yes, what? Yes, 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 yeah. All, okay. of, all of the above. I I'll see, take them all. I see Terry more in the assless chaps area. <laughs> 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 oh my god how funny how funny oh, okay and we put that all over the place promo pics everything be splashed on right. our front page everywhere that right. we could put that billboard signs his church anywhere <laughs> oh that would be funny oh. that would be really good okay so i'm about six two and a <laughs> <laughs> with a bald head, you know, and and I'm saying just just six two with a bald head and assless chaps. I'm not 100 percent positive this is gonna. So I'm gonna look like one of the village people. The blue to go <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh my gosh! So stay away. From I wonder that. what the village people are doing right now. I don't, I don't know, know, but I, no. I I don't I don't care about the whole straight gay thing. There, I love their music. I thought their music was great. Right. Who cares? Saying, I love disco the music. Think they're doing. The only thing they're doing right now is playing on my MP3 player every time I get in the car. I can promise you that. Oh, yeah. Until oh, wow. somebody walks by and that window's going right up. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's funny. It's like, no, I'm not listening to them. Oh, no, no, but I don't care. It was just on the radio, of course. they are, but they were just such a, a huge cult thing. Yeah. Well, you <laughs> said were. you had a bass player. So what, what, kind of, what kind of band did you have? What, what kind of band are you in or um, have? Well, I've got a disc coming out on Strange Way records really soon and it was called the skirt which we're going to probably start playing again because of this lp coming out but it was the skirt and an all-girl band it was bass and she sang i played guitar i sang and then we had a drummer which was like spinal tap we always had to get a new drummer it was constant <laughs> okay you know they didn't you know just combust spontaneously combust but they just you go through drummers it's just a normal thing in a band what kind yeah, of are we talking rock and roll music here yeah it was like rock and roll punk type okay stuff. okay sure so kind of like, like ramones or style. more like you know ramones. okay i got you oh boy kind of ramones ish uh julie brownish um i'm trying to think well, if I looked at your phone and your music right now, what, what what's some of the stuff we'd oh. see on it? Oh, boy. Okay, it'd be different. It would be Fleetwood Mac. Okay. Uh, Metallica. Oh, yeah. Mm. She's speaking. Rat. You're speaking my Metallica language. And AC you're, you're here. Metallica. Oh, yeah. You're <laughs> speaking our language here. I love them. I, I right. think they're just great. So those would be some of the top ones, I would think. But I love Joan Jett, too. She's oh, yeah. great. Oh, you yeah. crushed it. But you know what? Fleetwood, I love Fleetwood. Stevie Nicks' voice is just, oh, my goodness. She's and the so way she writes. Oh, my right. God. Oh, 
goodness, what a great band. Oh, You're I, right. It, it is. I got to see them live and I just like, it's like, oh my God. I think that, I think so, you, I think you can appreciate anything. The older you get, you just kind of, you know, you appreciate all music. You know, when I was younger, it, yeah. was, it was heavy metal. I didn't want to hear nothing else. Then as I got older, right. I started introducing new things. Now I love, you know, I'm, I'm a big Eagle fan, which to be yeah. honest with you, I, I can't, I, I have to admit, you know, I always liked Hotel California, but I think anybody liked that song. Everybody did. So yeah, I saw this documentary on um, Netflix called The History of the Eagles, and that really kind of turned me on to them. And it's, that's ironic considering, so I haven't been a huge Eagles fan for a long time, but better late than never, I guess. But yeah, that's kind of where I got. I got, I got invested in, in listening to them and I've always been an ACDC Metallica fan and mm-hmm. I was just going to say ACDC too. In yeah. my book, it, it mentions that it's one, one of my favorite bands. In fact, like three doors down, there's an amphitheater and Leonard Skinner's playing there tonight. So I'm just waiting to hear Sweet Home Alabama and the crowd, oh. go, crowd going, Ooh! Oh, so you can hear from where you're at? You can actually hear from there? Oh yeah. I oh. can hear them. Yeah. Oh man! I, I went know. inside though. I went inside. Okay. Oh, They're playing man. under the full moon. <laughs> oh wow! Skinnered. What a that's another great band right there. Oh, oh my! So goodness. many good songs. You're um, not kidding. Yeah, it is. Okay, so we it know is. that what what the what the music that you like. But let's let's go ahead and let's go ahead and put a little bit of embarrassment here to you. What's that? Okay. What's that song that? That you know, somebody if you said that's on your MP3 player or whatever you have, that that people are going to go, really? She actually has that on there. She listens. So like me, I, I don't oh, care. You, you know, would admit it. it. You would. You would. You would say that's not mine. Yeah, you yeah. Would I, deny know, that I know. I it's I know. I do. It's vanilla ice, isn't be, it? Probably. It's vanilla ice. Come on. <laughs> vanilla ice would okay. definitely be on there. And you would admit. <laughs> okay. That. Even though I'm proud of it, kind of, but okay. kind of like. Ugh. Um. <laughs> Probably from Moulin Rouge, come what may. Okay, yeah, you lost me on that one. I don't know. That's that like one. that's uh, my favorite movie, and nobody would guess that. Um, with Nicole Kidman and Ewan McGregor. Oh wait, yeah, I love Ewan McGregor. So, and it's a musical. Yeah, I know, I know the film because as soon as Star Wars came out, uh, after it had come out, and I was paying attention to everything he was doing at that time, I saw, I saw it came out with that movie, and the first thing that hit me was. What what the hell is this? <laughs> a yeah. musical? So, I know. I'm not a musical person, obviously. No, um, no. But I'm not either, usually. But this movie, for me, it worked. Usually, I just think it's just so stupid. But for me, it worked. I don't know why. So you're 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 going to admit to Moulin Rouge, then? Okay. Yes, I will. <laughs> I will admit to it. I mean, you admit it to that. I'll throw one out there. For me, it's Annie, it. the musical, the original with Carol Burnett. The, oh, the song in the beginning. The sun will come out. Well, not that one, but the other Jesus. one where they all sing together. You know, oh, hard so, knock life. Or yes, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what it is. I oh, like that song. Cute. I'll watch the movie from yeah. the beginning, that part, and then I'll turn it off. <laughs> so. Yeah, I know. I know. It's like, oh, feel his heart. I go from Metallica to Annie. Feeling, and then I'm going to turn it off. The rest is not good. Absolutely. Guess, so, so let me think. I guess mine would probably be like Abba, Dancing Queen. Or one of them. Oh, yeah. you know. oh my God, how funny! I know I love ABBA. ABBA. This is not There's a lot of ABBA fans. I know. I just freaking admitted that it's ABBA dancing queen, and then we're talking about me and assless chaps. People are going to get a definitely. Oh, and the village me. people. Don't forget the village. Oh, the village people. My God, you're right. Oh, good lord. Oh, oh my God. This is fantastic. I I I don't know what else to say. I I I do like them. I do like ABBA. Oh my God, well, something's wrong with me. People. They're going to have a different view of you now, a I little know. bit. <laughs> Maybe a touch. Yeah. A new take on you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, right. so, I mean, obviously, we, okay, so we're, I guess, kind of getting off the rails here a little bit with the uh, oh, well. with, with me and ABBA and all that kind of Anyway, we'll move on here. So, obviously, we, we, we know the, uh, the music. Um, what about, like, movies? I mean, is it, are you specifically, uh, obviously, besides Moulin Rouge, are, I mean, when you see movies that are coming out like these days and, mm-hmm. you know, the horror movies are just not what they used to be. I'm sorry. The seventies, eighties was no. just the king of the greatest horror movies ever. And now oh. what do you think of them now? The, OK, not I'm not talking about like the big budget ones. I'm talking about the insidious and, the you know, whatever. Oh, I was going to say that. How weird. Yeah. Right. Right. Do you like those? No. Yeah, me neither. I don't like any of those. Are the paranormal ones? I just, 
such I a can't rip. believe people are so stupid. I guess they haven't seen the really good eighties. They haven't, you know, movies and stuff. You're right. But uh, Insidious, I thought was stupid. All the same kind of thing, and when they add the paranormal in, it just doesn't work for me. I don't like. Uh, I don't. I don't like the one where they. It's got the, like the little clown guy riding a bicycle, and everybody goes into these rooms. Oh, Saw. Saw. Yeah. Saw. Oh, Jigsaw. It, se- it seems like the movies are they're the same movie over and over. Basically, it's just how else can I blow yeah. somebody up or tear somebody apart? I don't really enjoy just the senseless of ripping people apart kind of thing. And here I am saying I love zombie movies. To me, there's a there's a <laughs> point to those though. The, the zombie movies have a kind of like a survival aspect and a grouping. Well, yeah, it made you think. Uh, yeah, yeah, a group. Well, a group of people banding together for a common cause, where that it's not quite the same thing to me. So, I, I don't enjoy the I don't enjoy the, just the senseless stuff. But because it's funny, like right before we did this interview, I uh, I was with my son and we were taking the dog for a walk around the block. And you know what he says uh, to me? He goes, what? "Dad," I said, "What?" He goes, "What would you do if there was a zombie apocalypse right now? Like, where would oh, we no. go? What would you do? You know?" And I started yeah. thinking, like, I don't know what I would do. You know, I mean, I mean, I don't, I really, he's like, wouldn't we just go back to the house? We'd be safe there. Cause that's just, you know, that's a, that's a child's mentality. You know, we, we would definitely be safe there. No, no right. zombie could get to a house, you know, but I know. Like, I, don't, I don't, I don't know where we would go. I don't, I don't know what we would do. You know, I mean, and yet we still, we still think those things because Night of the Living Dead, Return of the Living Dead, um, Jaws even. If you think about Jaws. Oh, my God. Yes. The, you know what? Early 70s. And people can still go to the beach right now and say, Jaws. I'm not going too far. Thing Jaws think, is yep. You know, yeah. I'm not oh, gonna go yeah. Out, me too. I'm not going to go out into the woods right now because Jason's could get you, you know, whatever, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. but, but now what, what movies are out now where you can really, you know, where you could really say that, where you could really go. You know, oh, you know, this doll could get, you know, whatever that, what was that movie with the doll? Poltergeist or or the one with the Oh my God, the Poltergeist remake. That sucks. Yeah. Oh, (laughs) good Lord. Oh, I know. It's still, I'm sorry, it still doesn't compare to the original. Chucky? Uh, Chucky, yeah. Well, actually, you know, I. I Well, there's like 50 of those, isn't there? Am I a little off to think that the original Child's Play was actually okay? You know? That was my, yeah, I liked it. I didn't hate that. It just you know? too many I mean, of no, them. I think they bad. drug it. Through, they it wasn't through. bad. It, I mean, certainly it wasn't Nightmare on Elm Street. It wasn't, you know, Friday the 13th or no. Halloween, you know, no. but, oh, which by the way, did, did you hear that there's a new Halloween that's going to be coming out? What do you think of that one? I, there's a new Halloween coming out? Yeah. Like, uh, Seth Rogen and I think John Carpenter's actually going to have something to do with it. Yeah. It's supposed to be oh my God. later this year or next year. I can't remember yet. It just I literally do. just came out. It was all over. Um, in Florida, I don't hear anything. It's terrible. <laughs> right. I can't find an entertainment weekly. It's like we're. You I don't know, think I don't know you can. I, I, I don't think you can find that anywhere anymore. <laughs> entertainment weekly. You know what? Yeah, it's right. called dot it's com. <laughs> there is no magazines anymore. You walk into a store You're and ask right. for a magazine. The kid behind the counter is going to ask you, "What the hell? What? What, what is that? Oh, <laughs> yeah, what is it? Yeah, anything, any publication. So, but, but you but, can buy the. You know, one thing that'll never go out is the um, Inquirer. Oh, oh yeah. good lord! Yeah, because with I Angelie guess. Jolie skeletal. Well, looking. she's dying now, and you know, and and actually, Brad Pitt's. I don't know, she's whatever. an alien. So. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! Wow. <laughs> so I mean, we covered music. Covered. We got some movies in there. What What are some of the stuff you got coming out? I, um, what do you got coming up? Well, right now the barn just got released, and they have it on their. I don't know why they didn't get a distributor because you guys would love it, and '80s fans would love it. It's um. On Nevermore Productions, uh, their site, but it's called The Barn, and it's they're going to do a sequel to it, which I'll be in, which will be really fun. But it's a great movie; it really is. If if you like eighties horror, you'll love it. Okay. And then I just did one with I told you Ed Neal, uh, called Best Laid Plans. And then there's another one that's going to be out really soon called Devotion. And there's there's a bunch of them that are going to be out. The Everglades Killings. Any chance we'll see any of these on Netflix? I wouldn't doubt it. Because Netflix seems to pick up all the all the you know all the 
the the the non prime movies that are out there. They seem to pick up almost everything, which I'm going to be honest with you, I really like. Um, because it it gives exposure to some of the other people's movies without you know the mainstream stuff that's out in the theater right now. And not that that never hits I'm Netflix, so glad. but if you want to watch it, I I watched a movie. Uh, I think it was called uh, State of Emergency. It was temp- it was basically like a zombie movie, but not really. It's kind of more on yeah. the they were infected, and it was this guy uh, that I happened to see in a commercial who was the main character. And uh, he, I saw him in a commercial once, and then he's the star of this movie. See, these are all B-movie actors, not really known for anything. And I'll be honest with you, I thought it was really, really good. Um, the acting was not State bad. State of Emergency. State of Emergency yeah. is on Netflix. But okay. it was a really, really good movie. And I thought, you know, this is better than some of the crap I've seen in the theaters. And I think today, all you see is the, the stuff that the studios are willing to throw millions and millions at. But... Netflix gives that opportunity for people who don't get who don't get exposure to the other stuff, mm-hmm. and it's some of the That's older funny. movies. So you're right. I'm watching on my screen right now. Who's watching Netflix? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, uh, I, I saw there's like a three and a half hour documentary on there about all the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, um, oh. Any so what your position your position in the Nightmare on Elm Street four movie you were you were one of the people into the puppet the big puppet in the really big big one yes okay the one that was really really like two stories at least tall yeah because they said that fell down right it wasn't secured properly oh my god did it were you the in it when lady that fell that, yeah um the poor lady that was on top this older Japanese woman like crash to the cement, you know, threw her off. And then there were three of us inside of him. And we were on apple boxes with covered with KY jelly (laughs) pushing out of this, like kind of like it's called dental dam, but it's kind of like a balloon. (laughs) Okay. And we're like all pushing out and it like falls and everybody tumbles on me. And I'm like, ah, they were pretty big guys. And, they got it back up again, and of course, um, my husband at the t- at, well, I got engaged there. I, I kind of because he brought me the ring there, <laughs> but I already knew we were getting married. But back to that, he got really upset. He's like, "Don't tell anybody about this that it fell over," you know, because he was embarrassed about it. What, 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 anybody? <laughs> they I mean... hadn't they hadn't secured it better. Okay, well. Uh, they were talking about they. There was actually a good section of it. So if you ever look at the documentary on there, I mean, they actually talked to. They showed a couple of people that were in the puppet before they went in and everything. And I don't know if that would have been you on there or not, but um, they were. I kind might of, have been. I was. I had like I was in a white unitard and I was airbrushed with, with reddish hair. Okay, where you everybody was naked too, right? Well. Not really. It was it was a unitard. Made to look the that way, way they airbrushed it, mm-hmm. us that we looked naked. Yes, that's mm-hmm. the way it was made to look. So, mm-hmm. and then yeah, they had you exactly. pushing. They had you pushing it through, and then the director saying that he knows what teenage boys like, and that's what he's kind of prompting <laughs> for. And yeah. I mean, not just teenage boys. I might add, but um, <laughs> no, I'm a big fan of all the Freddy movies. I like them, even the corny ones. I thought after a couple, after the first couple. They got really kind of corny, but I think people like that about it. So, well, Freddy uh, didn't oh, yeah. go super extreme with the nudity either, though. The nightmares didn't go like crazy with it. Like, like, no, they didn't. You know, they like really Friday didn't. the 13th, you know, you knew when you were watching a Friday the 13th movie exactly oh. what you were going to get. As soon as somebody started having sex, one of them was going to die in the act. Yeah. <laughs> that was the rule. <laughs> that was the point. <laughs> You're right. That, it's funny because I just filmed something. That they haven't thought of the name of it, but it, it was a thing where I'm hosting it, doing like, you know, the different things that you see happen in the movies, like the girl fumbling with the keys and them falling and, you know, just her not being able to get the lock in when she normally just walks up and unlocks the door. And you're just certain things like that. It just shows the funny things. And then it's like, then this is what Linnea would do. You know, I just go up to the door and lock it and bolt myself in. You know, <laughs> you know I was actually, uh, I was reading a quote from you and I, I, it was just, it was really kind of cool because I, I really wanted to ask you about it. It says, you have more to say on a low budget film. 
you don't have a million people telling you what to do. Is that true? Is that really it's like true? It's very yeah. true. Yeah, I mean, you've got I too many imagine. people. Yeah, I mean, was it was there? I mean, I guess a tremendous difference between, say, uh, you know, pick a movie versus the Nightmare on Elm Street. You know, I mean, did you? Is it is it a lot of hurry up and wait when you get into those bigger budget type movies? And 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 if you say, you know, hey, I don't like the way my characters, you know running or walking or what she would have never said this or she would have never done that you probably couldn't do that on a bigger budget movie no you wouldn't really be able to say that on a bigger budget movie mm-hmm. unless you had a really great director that trusted you but like a david dakota movie you know sorority babes you know, slime ball bolorama type movies they kind of just trust you and let you do what you do as long as you hit your marks and know your lines. And I would imagine that makes going to your job a lot more fun, too, when you can oh. actually, you know, switch it up a little bit. Like a little know? more, I mean, I, like a smaller budget movie, maybe you're getting a little bit more creative control or can make a little sure, bit more suggestions. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And it isn't as much hurry up and wait because you're having to film so fast. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Well, I'm, I'm, it's almost like a play. Okay, next costume change. I like I like lower out. budget movies. I'm a big fan of uh, Bruce Campbell, and of yes. course he does a lot of B movies. And uh, I remember reading his book that he did about being a B movie actor, basically. And uh, I, I don't know. I really, I really, I mean, I don't think people get enough of a chance. They make it sound like it's a bad thing, but there's a lot of quality stuff out there if they give it a chance. Plus, I think with all the big budget movies they have out right now that are CGI to death. The, the, oh boy! It, it loses a quality about it. Um, it does. I mean, look what happened when they did the the prequels where all the Star Wars movies that, that George Lucas did. Mm-hmm. People liked them, but they complained a lot. So when the Force Awakens came back out, and the director went back to using film stock and using the stock that they used back in the seventies, and went to the more mechanical look and not so much CGI, people really took to that. They responded to it. So I think there's something to be said for that. Sure. You're you're right. I think there is more realism, and they believe it more than just these things that can't be real. They're in front of a green screen, and people know it. Oh yeah, I mean, look at how look at like Sharknado. Look how that took off. Right. Yeah, I know. So such which is great, like a campy you, movie, but with big stars in it, and everybody wants to be in it now. You um, like that? Do you exactly. like the Sharknado movies? I have to say that. I haven't seen one yet. Me I either. want to. Oh, me either. <laughs> but uh, I haven't seen it. I, I still wouldn't and mind And I didn't see it. The Human Centipede yet. No. I don't know. I don't know no, if I can watch either. that, to be honest with you. Those are two that I know got a lot of press, but I just haven't seen them yet. So, I mean, as far as like what, uh, I don't know. I mean, like obviously the movie you were in, Return of the, of the Living Dead, you're on the shelf. I actually have the DVD. So, <laughs> oh. Well, oh my God. I remember when I first saw that movie. I, I remember waking up with a nightmare because the, the the one part I kept remember seeing was uh, when you were all powdered white, I guess, as a zombie, and you tore into that guy's head. <laughs> so oh, God. how hard was that to to be like in that water where all those guys grabbed you when they were when they first got a hold of you? Did that freak you out even when you knew it was fake? But still, kind of uh, that was still what bothered me. It freaked me out because again, I know how extras are; <laughs> they want to be seen. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah, sure. Be in the shot. So I was really scared they were going to like really be overzealous and jump on me mm-hmm. and, you know, almost drown me so that they could be seen. <laughs> so that's what I was really kind of scared about, you know, because they really sometimes get into it. Right. Right. Do you, I, I mean, mean, a little yeah. too. I mean, that's that. <laughs> I got to say, so that's one of my favorite zombie movies, but more on a comedy tone. And, of course, I like the original black and whites. I like all of them, actually. I mean, I'm a big mm-hmm. fan of The Walking Dead that's out right now. Right. Um, oh, me too. I, yeah. I, oh, my God. Poor Glenn. Oh, my, yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah. I mean. Um, I, it starts, what, Sunday, right? Yeah, Sunday. Did they premiere? Yeah, I thought it Negan's premiered. pretty yeah. cool, though. Yeah, yeah, I know. But, you know, they're only setting him up like this because he's going to take one hell of a fall. I love Negan. Oh, he has to. Well, they he all do eventually. To. Look, they all end up meeting their meeting their end in some way or another. But the people, they, the people they killed off, nobody's safe. The only person they're not going to kill off is Rick because he's the main guy. But yeah, they can't kill off Rick. But right, my running theory, my running theory is 
Mm-hmm. It's a co- he's in a coma right now. So my running theory is he's going to wake up and this was all part of the coma at the end. I don't know. Oh, I love that. I never would have thought of that. Uh, that's think. my, that's kind of like the whole, you know, Toto in Kansas and, and the, the hurricane. It's kind of yeah. like, and, and all the people that he, you know, he, they're going to be working in the hospital or, and, you know, that kind of stuff. So maybe, wow. Rick, maybe that's my Rick theory. Will wake up from the coma and then get eaten by a zombie. Immediately. I, say, I don't maybe, like Rick. Or he'll go home and his again. buddy will be banging you know, his maybe wife. Maybe he wakes up again and it's, it's the same thing. Or it's starting all over. Okay. Yeah, it's starting all over. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Cool. Or he goes home, he's happy, and then it starts happening. <laughs> I don't know. You, I, I, see, know. you know what? I think I think I got a job as a writer. What do you think? So not not you actually write writing. Cause, in because I just want to be an extra. And I would be, I would be, I would be right there with you. You know how you were saying with the like, chaps, you know, yeah, you know, <laughs> no, you know how you were saying like all the extras would be like trying to get in the shot. That would be me. <laughs> oh, good. As to you, everybody on the comes to me and says, "I was the zombie on the Walking Dead that had the balloon." Like and you're I'm supposed like, to know yeah, what that right. means. Yeah, okay, right, no. right, right. You know, and and you could see me doing this or that. And, it, it's just, it's kind of funny in a way. It's, it's cute, but you know they're lying. <laughs> yeah, and even I'm if they're not, this. I mean, you got lucky one time to be on as an extra, but that doesn't mean like you've got a major movie career coming. But you also, you know, you no. can strive. And then if you're lucky, maybe somebody will want to use you for something bigger. And it just keeps snowballing like that. Um, Brad Pitt, I saw him. He had a very bit small pit part in the Freddy Krueger TV series. <laughs> so really? you should see him in that. He's really that. young. Oh yeah. Um, oh my god. Lori Petty. All the all a lot of big name actors were in that crappy show. <laughs> so, but, oh my god. I didn't know that. I love Lori Petty. She's. I love Tank Girl. That was a great movie. You know, I never saw that. I remember her more from um, uh, the baseball movie with the what was all playing women. Oh women. yeah. So I was, oh, I can't remember it, but yeah. Well, you know something? We actually have uh, Tony Todd coming on uh, next month. You know, Candy Oh, Man. wow. Oh, I worked with him. He's great. Oh, Night Jesus. of the Living Dead. He did the remake of Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. Right. Or not night. Is it day? And, night? Well, no, no. no. <laughs> I don't know. What was that? Day? Could have been day. I don't know. Off the top of my head. No, but. I know. There's too so many awesome. return and I, he's, he's cool. He seems like he would be cool. I mean, like, you know, I, like I said, I was just talking with him today and, and we got everything straightened up that he's going to come on next month. And I was just like, this is super cool. We get you today get tony next month oh i'm i'm jacked i'm jacked you know the only thing that yeah. can make this better is your next movie you you cast me in as an extra and then like i say you can just you, you do whatever you can better yet better yet you right. put a, you play a clip of our show <laughs> there you go <laughs> oh, i love it yeah <laughs> oh well, man. i'd rather have you guys on and then have a clip of your show and okay. I'll know where to get hold of you at. So. Okay, uh, I, I'll I'll do it. Well, Let's do it. You yeah. got you've got a website. What it's uh, Linnea dash Quigley dot com. So yeah, it's like it's the hyphen on in the Facebook. Middle. It's the official Linnea Quigley site, and then it's at Linnea and Quigley for Twitter. Inst- I have, I'm on Instagram at Linnea Quigley. Witch Trap, which Kevin Tenney did, is coming out on Blu-ray March 28th. Okay. What's that about? So that is a movie where these paranormal investigators come to this house and people get possessed. And I can't tell you what happens to me because it's a real big surprise. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well. It's kind of laughable, but <laughs> it's a big surprise. Okay. And then that devotion I talked about is coming out March 1st. Okay. Okay. So you got some uh, in your CD, of course, that you're looking at. What was the name of the band? Skirt. The skirt. The skirt. S K I R T S. How did you skirt. forget that, Zach? Good Lord. I don't know. I'm gonna go out on a limb. You wear skirts when you perform? <laughs> yes, or? of okay. course. Okay. All right. I, I'm just... We'd go to the thrift stores and Lucky tear guess. up slips, and you know, <laughs> yeah. All right. It was it was I mean, great. I so, feel like we've had yeah we've on, on our website. For a bit, right? Yeah. Well, hold on. We got some questions for you. We got a question or right. two for you. But uh, you can go to our website at thestatementshow.com and go okay. to the blog page. We're going to have some links to your website and your Twitter. Thank where, you. Where people can find you. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And of course, everybody's going to want to listen to our past shows, our front shows, mm-hmm. our sideways shows, everything. So, oh. of course, yeah, of course. Of course. So, but that's thestatementshow.com. And anyway. Mm-hmm. 
Terry's got some questions. Go ahead, Terry. I do. Uh, let me see. Well, you know, obviously we've had you on for probably much longer than I, we said we were. Sorry, my fault. Um, <laughs> so I won't, I won't, I won't bore you with too many questions, but I, I there was one that was, just, I thought was really kind of cool. It came in about midday today and okay. I just, I said, man, this is, this is kind of cool. Uh, Jason, I want to say his name is Priest. I think it's, I don't want to mispronounce it. I think it's pre. So it says, hi, I hope you're still accepting questions for Linnea to answer. I would like to know if she has any memories of working with Tracy Lords. They had a short scene together in the 1998 film called Boogie Boy. They played two scream queens in a low budget horror flick. So I would love to know what are Linnea's thoughts of Tracy? Oh my God, that's wild. He'd yeah. seen that. That's a great movie. Mm-hmm. I remember I took photos on the set and I think, you know, Tracy was, you know, trying to make it into the movies. And my memory of Tracy is kind of a before it happened where the director came to me and said, you know, this was written for you because he wrote it. But the producer chose someone else because you've been too good in the business and haven't done certain things. And I went, "Uh Oh, he said, you'd go much far if you did. And I went, Oh my God. Actually you know, said that. Wow. Yes. And the director has been a friend of mine forever. So he mm-hmm. wasn't, you know, trying to come on me or anything sure. like that. But, you know, she seemed nice. She was quiet, mm-hmm. but I just remember. That. Mm, okay. I wonder if she ever yeah, met Charlie I- Sheen. <laughs> I Wait, no, that's Ginger. <laughs> is it Ginger? I don't ginger, know. I think is that so. ginger, ginger and Charlie were an item. Oh, really? Oh, I don't. I don't know. We talked. Yeah. To, we we know Bree Bree Olson and, and him were an mm-hmm. item too. Yeah. We, yeah, we we have Bree. I guess he show. was an item with almost everybody. But yeah. Yeah. probably so. <laughs> and now that you're mentioning Ginger and Tracy in the same in the same breath, there, I can actually remember. My very first, oh my goodness, I was probably 11 or 12, maybe, maybe a little younger than that. I was a latchkey kid and I would come home all by myself. I remember my dad had like his adult movies up in the closet. So naturally, ah. VCR days, you know, so I, I oh went up God. there oh my God. and snatched one. Yeah, yeah. So I went up there and snatched one. <laughs> and I went up there and you know, of course, okay, I'm going to take you back here. You remember how with the VCR, they had the little counter and everything on the VCR. So you had to, yeah. know, so I made sure I'd set it at zero. So I knew exactly where dad had it, you know? So, oh geez, my man, God. That was so and, methodical. And think this out, check this out. The first movie that I ever watched like that was those young girls that had Ginger and Tracy Lords together. And my poor eyes, I didn't, you know, I just, I just knew that there was a woman out there for me somewhere. So. Oh, oh, that's great. That's so but, cute. I can't believe you did that with the not, counter it's and saw that. <laughs> it's completely that's, disgusting, but you know, what do you no, mean? No, it's just normal. Is it? I don't I know. Think so. <laughs> I don't know. I, think I, was, so. I was by myself, so it was normal to me, you know? <laughs> Wow. Well, think of the poor 50s kids. All they could look at was Sears catalogs yeah, with women's know, girdles right? and stuff, you know? I can yeah, remember that's those times. Yeah. <laughs> All I had was Sunday oh, yeah. paper ads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like what was it? Yeah, Sears and JC Penney's when they were like just like in, in, in their bras and underwear. You thought, yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, exactly. Right. Yeah, this is cool. This is readily now available you- now. I mean, yeah, do you get, do you exactly. Get, it's nothing. Do you get that? Do you get a lot of guys like at maybe when you when you're out there talking about some of the other films and stuff you've done? Do you get kind of creepy people saying things, or do you just kind of take it like a compliment? I have to. Horror people are really, actually, really cool people. Mm-hmm. They're into animal rights. They're uh, you it's know, like vegans, the opposite of what of you would think. They're really yeah. cool. They're the opposite of what you'd think. I really haven't had any. Creepy, creepy, creepy people. Hmm, okay. Except <laughs> most of them are pretty cool. You know, I was sifting through the emails, and there was this one from, and I, I didn't even know if I was going to ask this one, but now that we're talking, this, this is so strange. But this one's from Ryan Dalion. I think I'm pronouncing mm-hmm. his name correct. Says, has has she ever worked with puppets before? And does she remember puppet. a puppet by the name of Kicking Tammy Faye? Do you remember this? I, I was like, Oh this God, is... that sounds familiar. 
I found that. Oh question. my God, Jeffrey, that sounds familiar. Puppets. You never worked Jeez. with puppets before, have you? I don't know. Puppets. I've done so many things. I mean, I don't think you talk about I, puppets. I'm thinking I'm not, Sesame Street and crank yeah. anchors and things like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like you've never been on Sesame Street. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, it seems like I did do something like that, like as a comedy book. I don't think it ever came out, but something's familiar about that. Yeah, I, I very found familiar. That, found that but I be, don't know what. It's hard because you've had such a you had such a long career to, to think of every little thing that someone I would know. spit out. You would probably yeah, because somebody comes up and says, "Oh, can you just do this for me?" And you know, sometimes you forget. Oh man, <sighs> hmm. do you get recognized a lot or? It depends where I'm at. You know, sometimes, I mean, I'm incognito in Florida, uh, (laughs) but, you know, in L.A., it it happens more Mm -hmm. Mm because people are watching films more. Here, I don't know what they're watching. I think you'd get along with Robert Ryan, uh, (laughs) Corpse. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. That guy is something. Yeah, he is something. And he's got a, a magazine called Girls and Corpses Magazine. Not nudity. Kind of skimming that line. Kind of like Maxim. In a way, but it's think of it oh, like nice. Max. Think of it like a horror magazine splash with Maxim. That's kind of how I yeah. look at it. It's called uh, Girls. Oh, that sounds gorgeous and nice. Oh, he's done. He's done like um, some horror movie stuff, and he's been in a bunch of like B movies. And he was actually he grew up when he was growing up. He knew Rod Serling. Uh, he was friends with his son. Oh, wow. And he and here's the funny part in the Tower of Terror for Disney World when they play the video yeah. in the beginning. He's the guy playing Rod Serling. He looks that much like him. Mm-hmm. So You're you know, kidding I know me. it's creepy. So because I was a big Twilight Zone fan, so that was a really cool story. But oh, me too. That's uh-huh. that, that podcast is actually on our website if anybody wants to hear it. Corpsey Robert Ryan. But I'm yeah, saying right. I think you two. I mean, you're right in that same genre. Um. And the kind of stuff that he does, I could see you in one of his mil- movies or in his magazine. That that definitely would be something I could see. And then he throws oh, wow. a whole- he throws a whole monkey wrench into the fact of with the faces of death movies. He, oh. he starts talking yeah. about that. And we were yeah. like, huh? So you've got to listen to the podcast. I don't, you know, if you haven't listened to it, I don't, I don't want to ruin it for you, but wow. Well, let me I give mean, you one tip. Well, well, let me give you one tip. Everybody he's interviewed, half the people that he's interviewed have died shortly after. <laughs> so maybe you don't want to talk to him. Oh, I'm throw that my out. God. <laughs> How, <laughs> when we've lived, go figure. Oh, my God, that's kind of scary. Be careful. (laughs) Be careful. But you know what? It's horrible. I go through my address book now, and I see Angus is not with us anymore, Robert Zadar, Gunner. These are people I've either worked with or I talk to a lot, and I'm like, Wes Craven. This is really creepy. This is Herschel Gordon-Lewis, who lived right by me, and I knew um, it's just really scary. I was trying so hard to get Gunner on. Uh, before he passed. Oh uh, no, you're kidding! I wanted to. I, I just wanted to speak with him so bad. There's, I mean, there's so many people like Kane Hot. I want to talk to Kane, you know. And yeah. he's just busy. He's just so difficult to try to talk to. You know, Robert England. I want yeah. to talk to him, and they're just they're just super difficult to you know to get in touch with and talk to. It's 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 hard. But, oh, you know, the people but, keep you away from them, right? Yeah. Well, that's probably more than uh, you get. Some people that will you know respond and interviews. Getting interviews is not hard per se. It's just do they want to take the time to talk? Because what they what people don't understand is when you when you come on a podcast, it lives out there on the internet forever. It's going to be out there forever. People are going to listen to this and think you're either cool or you're not cool. This is your chance to tell people, you know, what you represent, what you have and uh, what you can go see. And we like to interview people and try to push it a little bit, but not be respectful instead of just going out there trying to say, you know, whatever to get a reaction. I don't that's not my purpose. I don't want to go out there and just try to, you know, piss somebody off or. But I I, I think we there you can do a tasteful interview and you can talk to people and let them say what they want to say without trying to go over the top. And that's kind of what we're we're trying to be about. So and we and, go out and we get them, uh, get our favorite people. And obviously, you're one of my favorites in, the, in one of my favorite movies. Um, Thank you. Do you keep me dusted? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I viewed your DVD quite a few times. So oh, great, not great. any specific scenes or the whole movie. I don't want to make it sound like okay. some dirty thing. So uh, he's lying. Okay. His nose is growing as we speak. Hey, Uh (laughs) no way. So, I mean, let's just say when I was very young, that was a favorite of my movie and you were definitely in there. So 
and now that it's a little older, it's still a favorite of yours. Yes. That's why I'm so <laughs> glad I get it. Because <laughs> one day I would be on the statement show. Right. With See there? Harry and Zach. Mm. And I would be proud of it. And you're going to you're gonna help get me started as my career as being an extra, correct? Yes, I will. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And when about. I say I will, I will. Just remember, assless you- chaps, I'm telling you, you won't be sorry. I know I won't be. <laughs> He'll be like, can I go now? I'm tired. I thought Please. there wasn't a lot of standing around. <laughs> yeah, really. Oh, man. That's fantastic. Zach, he, let's get her off of this show. She is probably so tired of talking to us. I would be. I no, know. not at all. <laughs> well, you're in Florida. That's a happening place. Right. So he, and happening you're about to listen tonight. to Leonard Skinner. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got to get over there and hear... Um, that smell. Oh, the Simple yeah. Man. I like that song. That's one of my favorites. I, they call it like, The Breeze. I like The Breeze. That's, oh, I love that song. Yeah. No, I, I take that oh. back. I like Free Bird. The actual live version of Free Bird is just... It oh, that's be, great, too. It might I be the greatest song that. ever. I love that song. Oh, oh I'd betray yeah. all the podcast out with that song if I didn't think they'd sue my ass off. So. <laughs> I know. It. Oh, my God. <laughs> Gennard. Oh, man. I, we appreciate you coming on the show. It re- really is. And we'd love to have you back on at some point in time. And uh, maybe when your album or your, your next movie comes out, you want to come on for a few minutes and pipe it. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll put Absolutely. it out there. But you're on our website. Okay. The statement show. That'd be com. great. Yep. Come to the statement show.com. Leanna's uh, podcast, obviously. And see, uh, go, go ahead and take some of her links. She's at Leanna. Is it, am I saying it right? Leanna? Le- Linnea. 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 Okay. Here I am saying you're wrong. I'm sorry. Okay. Linnea dash or hyphen yep. quigley.com or at Linnea Quigley for Twitter. And of course, she's on Instagram. You can find her on Facebook. All you have to do is Google her name and everything comes up. Uh, go ahead and check out her website. Uh, it's got a lot of cool pictures and videos and bio and, and links to a lot of the upcoming events and a lot of her movies. And, uh, she's been in a lot. So she's got a, she had a big career and go ahead and check it out. And Absolutely. if you want to talk to her, send her a tweet. Thank Please you, Linda. tweet me. Oh, yeah. Well, tweet. Thank you. And sure. we'll, you'll be extras and. Thank you. I'll come back on your show. Thank you so much for joining okay. us today. You're Have amazing. a good night, Linnea. Thank you so much. Okay. Good night, you guys. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> that was Linnea Quigley, Return of Living Dead, Silent Night, Deadly Night, Night in Elm Street 4, and Actress and Screen Queen. I love this, I'm man. Picking, she was great. I'm picking up a theme here, though, uh, Zach. It's like we, we're talking to people, and we go, hey, do you have like a half hour? They'll say, yeah, and we talk to them for an hour. Yeah. I mean. Is that, that rude of us? Nah, I don't think so. I mean, they enjoy coming on. If they didn't, they'd tell us to get the hell off. <laughs> or I'd they? kick him off. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I want to say, uh, so everybody listening to the show, if you go listen to some of our past shows, I'm not going to tell you who it is. There was one interview that we had mm-hmm. that I thought wasn't going so well. Mm-hmm. And if you can listen to the show, you answer what show you think it was. If the interview wasn't that good and we ended it quick, we'll put you on the show. You can call in and we'll we'll have you on for a little bit. But if you can figure out which one it is at thestatementshow.com or you can Google us and go to iTunes and look at our full list right there in iTunes. And I'd rather you do that, by the way. Go on iTunes and, and uh, leave a comment and uh, say, you know, put a comment on iTunes. Listen to one of the shows. Tell everybody how you want to see Terry and Assless Chaps. Mm-mm. Yeah. Mm-mm. But we got a lot of good upcoming shows. We got Captain... Captain Hot coming on from Man, Woman, Wild from the Discovery Channel show. What was uh? Yeah. What was, oh, you're talking about Tony Todd. Tony Todd. See, I, yeah, hey, I got yeah, part yeah. of it, half of it right. Tony Todd. I so we we're going by first names here. <laughs> like, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> go <laughs> say, yeah, Joe, go Todd. check out some of our past shows, though, man. We had Kurt Angle, Robert Ryan, yeah. aka mm-hmm. Corpsey, Brie Olson, Eric, Fran Eric Drescher Zella was just on. Who? Yeah, Fran Drescher, Eric Zella. Oh, from, Eric Zella. Uh, oh my God, yep. Eric Zella. The Raiders dot com. The Raiders. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Paranormal Podcast, one of my favorite, favorite mm-hmm. paranormal podcasts with Jim Harrell. And mm-hmm. man, Stan what a Friedman. Stan Friedman. Dame Drops. Dame Drops. Yep. Trying to get some of these guys back on, by the way. We're going to have Ivana Cadaver back on. Uh, we oh, were yeah. scheduled to have her. She yep. had a, a, a previous engagement that kind of took more time. So we are going to have her back on the show. Oh, um, absolutely. We've had Stan. Ivana, it might be one of our favorites ever. Ivana is amazing. Oh, she's at, oh, Got she's, she's back. cool. Yeah, she's really cool. Yeah. So, lots of cool shows on there and upcoming shows coming too. And, you know, as far as, um, sponsorship goes, we're going to hold off until we gain, you know, a little more. And 
we'll get a sponsor in there eventually. But right now, we're just going to worry about good content for people. And I think we're going to be working on a um, a uh, PayPal link to go on our website for donations if anybody want to make a donation to the web help keep us going here and pay a little extra to help show your appreciation for some of the shows coming out but uh i think terry's going to work on that absolutely we're thinking of uh coming up with some merchandise here soon maybe a coffee mug or, or a t-shirt with the statement show on it and uh you know the podcast that fits into a category man so and that's what it is we are the podcast that fits into a category because we, we don't so and then i'm gonna have a brand new career as an extra what do you think of that one zach assless chaps that's no. what i think you I can just imagine you running from the Blue Oyster uh, 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 bar. Oh, yeah. What was that? Was it the Blue Oyster? What? No. That yeah. doesn't sound right. Was, was it? it? Something like that. It was in the Police Academy movie. Dun, dun, yeah. dun, 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 dun. You know that? <laughs> I do remember. <laughs> I don't know what that was called. What was that called? I don't remember. All right, Terry, no. man. Tell everybody how you, how you can find us. All right. You can find us on our website at thestatementshow.com. Check us out on Twitter at Statement Show. Uh, on YouTube. What am I missing, Zach? I feel like I'm missing Facebook. Something. Facebook. Facebook. Yep. Uh, iTunes. Yeah, you, exactly. <laughs> iTunes. Remember what I said. iTunes. Leave a message or leave a review anyway. Not a message. And I <laughs> can't get on about not going to YouTube because I've been crushing it on YouTube. Oh, yeah. And our subscribership is going up on that. So Yeah. Uh, make a comment. I don't care if it's good or not. If you have a critique, put it out there, man. We're all for it. Anything we can do better. If somebody thinks we should try to get somebody on the show, go ahead and tell us, and we'll we'll see what we can do. I mean, no guarantees, but as you can we see, we got best. bigger and better guests coming out. Yeah, we're doing our best. So, um, but Terry's doing a great job on Twitter. So I uh, give my props to him. Appreciate. It. Thank you. But anyway, everybody, you listening to the Statement Show, and the lights are out. See ya. What did Reagan win? <laughs> I wish. Well, he turned over in his grave, that's for sure. <laughs> Terry Moore in the assless chaps area. <laughs> oh my god, how funny. Of the scream queen. All right. <laughs> the queen. The That's right. <laughs> <laughs>